Hello everyone, I'm Zeenat Pirdos and I have Dr. Sukant Khurana with me. He is a well-known entrepreneur, mentor, scientist, public speaker and an artist. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. This series is about art and technology. So my question to you, sir, is that what is painting and what's the brief history of it? Uh, thanks for asking. So in this day and age, painting is uh, evolving because you can even have painting with components of uh, sculpture. If you look at the works I do, uh, I even use on uh, traditional painting. I even apply fire. I even have shot my paintings with a bullet, right, with a gun and uh, uh, stabbed it with a knife, destroyed it, thrown it out. But that's sort of a, the atypical extreme. In the simplest sense of the history of painting, see, painting has been practice of applying, right? Any pigment, paint, color, or any medium to a solid surface. A solid surface can be called matrix or support. Uh, if you're thinking of a typical artist, you may think of paper or canvas, right? But the medium is commonly applied to base with a brush, but other implements such as knives, sponges, airbrushes, and fingertip, right, are often used. Uh, I have often painted very large pieces with my fingertips. So my fingers used to be extremely dirty when I was involved in painting large pieces. Now, these things, these exercises of applying are not new, actually very ancient and might be older than the evidence we have. So the support for paintings can include walls, paper, canvas, wood, glass, lacquer, pottery, leaf, copper, concrete. Right? And the paintings, as we discussed, might include several materials, including sand, clay, paper, plaster, gold leaf, even whole objects. I've applied uh, animal skeletons to my paintings. I've applied crayfish exoskeleton and all when I was at uh, Long Island. Um, so, Painting is uh, one of the commonest forms of visual art. It's not the only form. It brings in elements. Number one, drawing. Right? Second, composition. Composition is putting things together. Right? You might even have an art where you're composing a painting by having actually cutouts put together. Right? You have gestures in addition to drawing and compositions. And a lot of gestures, as you understand, uh, are visual gestures, right? You can have narration. You can be telling stories. In fact, one of the oldest stories in the world uh, we think of are through paintings. And uh, in some ways, even the boundary between the script and paintings in early the script is bit difficult because those are pictographic. And you have abstraction. <coughs> And you can even have a reaction to abstraction. For example, some of my work is extremely abstract and sometimes I do abstraction in the background and then I have found visceral reaction. For example, I come from a very interesting uh, background. I would not wish those huge contradictions. So my late mother uh, was a progressive person, born, brought up, lived in India, father, grew up in a very orthodox, very traditional way of thinking and then suddenly became a communist but maintained his extreme conservative ideas and looked up to Russia. While for me, Western civilization, Western democracies, especially USA, have been uh, inspiration since college days. Uh, it even resulted in trying to figure out things. So while I was doing PhD in neuroscience, I was very heavily involved in uh, political activism and uh, arguments, discussions, supported political movements in India for against corruption. And in fact, one of the guys who hacked my account when I was at Cold Spring Harbor was likely this guy who I developed a lot of political defenses with because he was from far left, could have been far right because my opposition remains to anything authoritarian. I want people to be as free as possible. So in this whole contradiction, People I met who are more conservative, they prefer things which are not abstract. And for them, abstract is bullshit. But you can imagine how abstraction is also setting things free. And abstraction beyond painting is like what you call in a paper an abstract, right? It's the essence. 
So painting has multiple components, drawing every one understands, right? Uh, composition, um, good people will understand and uh, composition can be even multi-layered. Like one, some of my pieces have more than 70, 80 layers. They can have gestures, they can have narration, and they can have abstraction. Paintings can be naturalistic, they can even be representational, right? Still life, landscape painting. Um, they can almost be photography painting, which really uh, tries to look like photograph, photographs, right? Like reality, realistic painting. But still life uh, can be interesting and these boundaries sometimes can change because in my case, I used to use abstract uh, background as the emotion scape and used often used gestures and real uh, foreground. And uh, to be very honest, when I was younger, I used to paint a lot of femme fatalis, beautiful women. Somehow I've gotten older before time. People say I'm 43, I'm not that old, but I somehow been feeling old, uh, fighting political battles, trying to reform science and do many things for the last seven, eight years. So not, not anymore my favorite uh, form, right? I still share others' works. Um, it can be narrated, but I think one of the things that you, we haven't seen much in narration is that paintings has had linear narration. I actually would like the way paintings to even have parallel narrations and across chronistic narrations and all. So narrations uh, have been mostly in the conventional art and symbolism uh, there has been in both conventional art. Most of the older form was highly symbolic, uh, but now there, there is a resurgence of symbolism, right? Some of the symbols can be very clear, right? Uh, which are universal. And they can be emotive, which are capturing emotions of face and other things, but they can also take form of expressionism, right? Your emotions can even be explosive, right? They can be political also. Art can be very political and take shape of something called artivism, right? Art activism, like Banksy's popular form. So if you think of painting, right, as it is one of the commonest media now only to be overtaken by films, because now you have a moving medium, which is more popular and somehow art, which used to be very common, uh, mundane, um, part of everyday life, which still is in some ways because we have visual designs on everything, right? You can even say the coffee drink coffee from has some kind of a painting. Um, even though it's printed in a commercial way. But uh, now, um, when we talk of really painting, it's become fine art, it's become expensive art, uh, it's become part of galleries. There is a movement even to free the paintings from galleries, and the ones who are trying to free it from gallery are still wanting to sell it in galleries. Because end of the day, artists want to make money, and if they can make enough money to buy a motorcycle, they will buy that, and if they can make enough money to uh, by a Rolls Royce, they will buy that, right? So end of the day, whether it's an artist or a scientist, we're all confined by the same uh, principles of society, the same greed, same temptations, right? So, but if you look at last several uh, centuries, millennia, uh, both Eastern and Western art, I mean, I actually, I think it's, um, the classification becomes stark only more recently. Um, when I say recently, I'm still talking centuries. But if you look at, uh, you know, last two, three millennia, a lot of both Eastern and Western art has been dominated by religious paintings. Um, whether it's biblical scenes of Sistine, Ch at Sistine Chapel, ceiling to scenes of Buddha. Uh, if you look at Gautam Buddha from Gandhara, you know, awe-inspiring work, uh, but Western art diverged in more experimentation in the last few hundred years. While in East, the experimentation was limited to pockets. It's not that it didn't happen, but East has been more conservative. And uh, me having born in India, lived my most of my life in the US, and then having come back to India, which uh, at a personal level, professional level, turned out to be a huge mistake. I was done with the best intention of transforming India, which now I do uh, not at all as an activist. I'm, I'm looking for any part of the world to make a difference uh, in form of entrepreneurship and form of art. Right? So I got extremely disillusioned. 
and this will use them more from people who want to make change. But for me, art, science, all of it was continuing. But my art background, which surprises people, because even in US when I exhibited, they were like, you are an American artist. I said, I am, but they said, but you're Indian. So there are labels, right? What's expected? And when I've exhibited in India, uh, the success and failure has been also tied to you're very American, right? So I don't really understand the American tag because it's not like I copied any American artists. I've taken inspiration from everything. Uh, so there are stylistic differences, there are thematic differences, but one of the things that you'll see in Eastern cultures, including India, is that they still remain highly stylistic, right? They, they still maintain a lot of gestures and all. And some of the experiments are not very original. Something works, and then people get married to their style in India. Extremely uh, shocking, but that's what happens. I'm not saying that doesn't happen in the US. In fact, I was given an interesting advice that this looks so grand painting, this doesn't. Stick to this, this is unique. I said, no, but this is not what I'm feeling. They said, no, but if you just stick to this and you make this all your life, you'll make a very good sale, right? So because art farmers are tired and you need to get married to a style. But all that said, let's look at when paintings evolved because paintings were the easiest, long lasting way of communication. And paintings probably had a history in evolution of the oldest um, thoughts, medicine, information being conveyed, magic, and religion, right? Our paintings have been tied to not just this, if you think of even Picasso, uh, one of the grand masters, uh, we can go into praising him, we can go into criticizing him. Um, uh, and uh, trust me, I don't hold punches. Um, I don't have heroes, which might disappoint people. Uh, I have uh, people to aspire to and desire to beat them. Right? But uh, when we look at them, uh, they've used sort of art for various things, uh, including the desire for sex, magic, transcendence, right? Um, and some other people who were surrealist were even trying to bring in interesting themes of science. There have been movements uh, which were a futurism where people were looking for even uh, dynamism, movement in the paintings. There have been a lot of things with a static media. So it's a very highly experimented media. Uh, but if you look at the oldest works which have survived, we earlier used to think that paintings in Western Europe, right, especially in the Franco Cantabrian region, were uh, right in Spain, uh, we see amazing artworks, right, southern France. Um, we used to think they were the oldest and 40,000 years used to be the textbook definition. 25, 30 years ago, when I was reading uh, art seriously uh, in terms of uh, you know reading academy books on it. But then if you look at uh, very interesting recent findings, they push the artwork uh, ideas and in fact uh, are a big dent to Eurocentricism. So if you look at district of Maros, right, in Sulawesi, Indonesia, and likely the migration to Sulawesi, Indonesia happened, happened via what is now modern India, right? Um, there are various ideas. I'll go into human migration from where it happened. But there are uh, caves in the district of Maros, uh, which have very clear figurative art. And that uh, very well uh, could go as old as 52,000 year old. Um, in fact, the likely the youngest, um, like most recent of it is still older than the European oldest art uh, and goes to 43,000 year old, right? It uh, looks like an animal. Um, uh, in the looks actually almost, uh, you know, it's a life, uh, it's a basically uh, limestone cave complex. Uh, it's in uh, province of Borneo and uh, looks like, you know, a bull, uh, like almost like a modern bull. But since it's such an old thing, it's not very obvious with which species they're depicting. Uh, and uh, you might know that, you know, Borneo has. Um, local species which have evolved on island uh, for quite some time. So, um, but a pig was also found in Indonesian island, which is almost uh, 45,500 year old. Right? Uh, but then what will shock absolutely baffled people recently, if you look at uh, Arnhem land, right, in northern Australia, 
it just blows our mind because it looks like people came out of africa uh, the moment they came out of africa they were painting and they might have even been painting for who knows maybe 20 30000 years before that or maybe much older 60000 year old uh, pieces of evidence in australia uh where we know for sure uh, that there is evidence of painting now some of the oldest painting is actually uh, not always figurative it's just hand print right so people wanted to leave behind a message yes we were here right some are saying yes i'm alive so it's a beautiful thing that uh, painting becomes a medium to say right there are cave paintings in indonesia france spain portugal italy china india australia mexico right so paintings go way back in western culture something that very interesting things have happened and i'll even uh, some later time discuss with you uh, some of my experiments and you and hence probably the reason why i get loved with western culture even though there was a very interesting series of um, eastern uh, masters and western masters where they just supposed the works of um, best uh, western painters for last 200 years or something and uh, the same from east from asia and i was included at least uh, fortunately in that eastern segment and i had um, quite few works taken from the 50 uh, supposedly top eastern masters um so that was at least good when maybe since at that time i was in india but in western culture there's been a very heavy use of oil painting watercolor and now everyone has moved on to acrylics but that has been the predominant thing until the last 50 60 years ago and in east the contrast is it was ink right color ink has historically predominated choice of media so the traditions have been different right the biggest change that has ever happened for art is actually because of invention of camera so if you think of uh, 1829 when photographic process started it deprived painting in a very great way amazing way for the need to be a recorder of history that's when beautiful experiments with impressionism right so instead of trying to capture things as they look what's your real impression of it that started post impressionism fauvism expressionism cubism dadaism which challenged the renaissance world view in some ways continued the renaissance world view because renaissance is essentially about reinvention always right reinventing yourself over and over and over again eastern and african paintings however continued the long tradition of stylization uh, still continues heavily um, not a fan of it i don't want to pretend to be fan of the stylization uh, at all that i'm not uh, modern and contemporary art has moved away from the historic value of craft and documentation in favor of concept which has also resulted in conceptual art so but as you can see when because we're discussing painting in terms of technology um and technology cannot be seen independent of human endeavor so painting is tied to human psychology it's tied to religion it's tied to sex it's tied to reproduction it's tied to our everyday life painting is very natural in some ways painting comes more naturally some aspect of sketch making than script and uh, initial script is tied to painting only and a lot of it has depended on technology your media how quickly can you move your brush are you using a paint which will dry so you can have multiple experiments so for example i have some artworks um, in fact some of them are sitting in new delhi which have more than 100 layers uh, they would not have been possible if oil media was the only media in this work i could paint 100 different layers over and over and over again with acrylic and uh, each layer dries out in half an hour one hour right so this was possible only because of um uh, the technology right so technology has played a huge role in it i uh, would love to discuss more but i hope uh, you get your answer what is painting painting is practice of applying a paint pigment color um on, onto a solid surface to produce various things ranging from a figure to a concept to a narrative right and you can be applying all of these things on clay paper plaster gold leaf uh canvas concrete right anything so i hope you get your answer what is painting yeah definitely
and it was a, a very interesting answer thank you sir